All right, hey, welcome back to the second part of our circular interpolation of counterbores video series. Um, we've got our block set up. Go back and see part one if you want to see a little bit more about the fixture we're using and how we set this block up on our EM105 here. So we've got our cutter uh, and we're going to single point these. This cutter body holds that insert at 12 degrees so just the tip can get. And we talked about why we would use it in an application like this. And if we look closely uh, on these counterbores, right, we, we have a lip coming down here and then the counterbore face extends underneath this lip. So we want to bring this cutter in and allow it to tuck in underneath that lip. And that's what's gonna let us in. Circular interpolation is the process that lets us cut that. So we've got our probe in the machine and we're gonna set up our program and show you inside the control what the features of these programs are. So, uh, the first thing you gotta do is create a, a program. And we're using our, uh, over here, we've got our, our block file set up and we have our circular interpolate counterbore uh, program that we can just add in. So I'm gonna go inside of that. And once we get inside this tab, you'll see, uh, we're in our set zeros page. And the set zeros is where we wanna go ahead and set our, um, basically the location of our first hole on the right is how I like to set these up. And we have locations, so we've got uh, one through six here for the six holes, because this is an inline six. So for our setup, all we have to do is we jog the probe over. We're gonna eyeball the center of our first bore. We're using our probe auto center feature, which lets us do, us do an inside diameter, a single inside diameter probe. And it's gonna go and touch four points. So it goes right, back, left, and forward, averages those distances and finds the center of the hole. Okay, that's done. And then I can simply double tap on X and Y DRO values to set the zeros. And on the Rattler control, it's very easy. All we have to do is we double tap the X, and that zeros, double tap Y, and we zeroed that. Now I also wanna go ahead and set my Z axis zero on the deck surface. So I'll just jog over the top of the deck surface. And then I'm gonna do a depth probe and it'll stop right on the, the top of this fire deck surface and we'll zero out Z axis. And that's zero. So when you open up the Rottler software and you create this program as we have, we now have our, our X, Y, and Z zeros set. Uh, I am using tool length values, so actual tool compensation. Um, if you're curious about that, there's a separate video uh, on tool length compensation and how to set that up. So inside of our in, uh, circular interpolate counterbore program, we've got our set zeros, vertical stops, and the locations. Locations holds blueprint indicated and probed. Uh, just like any other Rottler block software program, these are your bore locations. So you can type in the actual bore spacing. Usually we set uh, the first on the right is zero, zero. You can type in your bore spacing for X in the blueprint. Copy that over to the probed. Uh, and then when we probe this side down here on the right, it will go and automatically rewrite these values with what the probe uh, finds. Vertical stops, as always, controls our actual cutting locations. On the left, you have the bore profile. So this is going to be the clearance that the cutter is above when traveling hole to hole. Centering height is just so it can do its centering move in X and Y. Start boring height uh, is where the cutter turns on. And then outside diameter is the final OD of that circle that we're going to interpolate. Tool diameter is the actual diameter of the cutting tool. 
Uh, and the way that it figures out how the toolpath is, the circle it's going to draw, is basically figuring out the difference between these two. So we're using a tool that's set to 5.506 inches to cut a hole that's 6.2415. And then bottom of bore is, of course, the bottom ledge of our counter bore. On the right, probe clearance. That's for when the probe's in and we're probing. So it'll be one inch above the block uh, when the probe travels hold the hole. And then our probe height is uh, negative a quarter inch. So it's gonna probe uh, a quarter inch down from below the deck uh, inside the bores. Couple of things to note uh, when doing a counter bore like this and interpolating, uh, the first time you're setting up this program outside diameter, set that a little bit under what your final is. Uh, you can always take more out. And also your bottom of your bore, uh, you know, leave five for your first pass. Uh, five thousandths of an inch that way you know you can check it with the depth mic and, and make sure and then adjust accordingly um, no matter how careful you are with setting up your tools and touching off it's not uncommon to have a thou or maybe even two thou of difference just from uh, deviation from, from insert wear and, and it's important to just you know sneak up on it the first time so i'm gonna go ahead and let this probe we'll back the camera back out uh, and you'll see these all update we've got our probe in and it is active so I can go back to that locations tab and I'm just going to hit probe this side. And it's going to go and reprobe that first bore. Typically I let it reprobe the first bore even though I zeroed on it uh, just because I eyeball center uh, when I'm setting that X and Y zero. Uh, so you can have a little bit of variance, a couple tenths. Uh, so no reason not to just let it rerun that first one. So that's all finished up. It's updated the values uh, for our bore locations in the probe tab. So the next step is just to load up the cutter uh, and we can go ahead and hit cycle start. One thing I didn't talk about on the setup here is setting up this cutter. It's no different than uh, setting up any Rottler boring bar. You have your boring micrometer. Uh, this particular body is a one inch offset from center line. So as long as you know uh, how your boring mic set up and, you're, and you're, if you're cutting within hitting diameters accurately, you can set the cartridge itself in a standard boring micrometer um, and get the actual final length and that's the number you're going to type in for your tool diameter. Um, so that's all there is for the setup. That goes over it for setting up a program for circular interpolation of uh, counter bores. Hope you guys find this useful and stay tuned for part three and where we can see this thing run.